Honey, do you remember? February 14th, or as I like to call it, Singles Awareness Day. <laughs> That's the holiday that those who aren't in relationships celebrate instead of the other one. Being my second semester at San Jose State University, I had adjusted pretty well into dorm life. The day was pretty normal for me and all of my single guy friends, and we were ready to spend a playing any and everything that we could. Pool, ping pong, Super Smash Bros, you name it. We had the bachelor's day all prepared. It was around five in the evening when there was a sound that I didn't expect. My eyes widened as I saw a name I didn't expect to see ever again on my phone. It was a girl. Surprising. <laughs> Considering how bad I am talking to women, but, but yeah. She was a girl from my English class the previous semester. I didn't really care much for the class since at the time I was an engineer. But this girl in particular stuck out to me when nothing in that class did. We exchanged numbers because we did a group project together. She was pretty well-spoken all the time during class and always participating constantly. I was the opposite in that class, because English was not my strong suit. But it was strangely endearing to me watching someone be passionate about something. Yet there was on my phone a message. Hey, Brian, I know it's been a while, but are you free tonight? If you're busy, it's fine, but I was hoping we could go out. Freak. I didn't expect to see this girl again after that English class, but here she was asking about my plans. Flabbergasted. I stood flabbergasted. <laughs> I distinctly remember my roommate walking in and asking me if I was okay, but I had a strange look on my face. I tried to regain composure because I double-checked my phone. Was a girl asking me out? Was that what was happening? Because the 18-year-old me hadn't experienced anything like that. And let me tell you that the 21-year-old me still thinks that that was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. <laughs> Obviously, I had to be cool about it. Wait to reply. Make it seem like that wasn't something I was giving about. I waited for my phone to tick over to the next minute. That was long enough, right? I told her I'd be able to hang out. In a smooth and suave way, of course. <laughs> You want to meet at Thirsty around 6? Thirsty was one of the many boba places by SJSU. I wasn't really the biggest boba guy before coming to San Jose, but it was just the NorCal thing, so I joined the craze. I quickly ran to my closet. The mirror hanging on it showed my usual attire. Plain t-shirt and basketball shorts. Yikes. I'm just like, bum. A quick look at my clean clothes led me to a pink button-up shirt, dark jeans, and the tie I'd never worn during my tenure at San Jose. I cleaned up nice. If you don't agree, just nod your head for my sake. <laughs> One more frantic look in the mirror. Glasses? No glasses. I thought I looked better without them, but I couldn't see for my life. Hopefully that wouldn't be a problem. I could feel the sweat coming. I was nervous. Three layers of deodorant later, I was pretty much ready to go. <laughs> At that point, it wasn't that close to six, but close enough where I could do the thing. You know the thing where you get there hella early, but when your date ask, gets there and asks, were you waiting long? You reply nonchalantly with the, no, I just got here myself. <laughs> if you didn't know about that, now you do, and you're welcome. <laughs> Thirsty was definitely a hipster looking place. There are small tables with booth style seats against the walls, as well as a bunch of plushies everywhere from different animes. My eyes kept switching between my phone and the door. Every time I saw her during class, she always had her hair up in a ponytail, which in my mind was kind of her defi defining thing. So I was looking for that. But to my surprise, I didn't even notice her walk in until she was standing almost directly in front of me. <laughs> she was wearing a white sleeveless button down shirt and a black skirt. Her jet black hair was shorter than it was when I had last seen her. Also, instead of being in a ponytail, it was down and curled a little bit. And the glasses that she normally wore were missing from her face. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. During class, of course, I always thought that she was pretty. But this was just making me realize how crazy all this actually was. I was here with her on Valentine's Day, the one time I actually got to call it that. Hi there, she smiled as I put my phone down. I stood up and greeted her. Do I go for a hug, a handshake, just a wave? Before I could make up my mind, she went for a hug and I reciprocated. Did you wait long, she asked. Bingo, there it was. No, I just barely got here myself. <laughs> we made our way to the counter to order our boba. What can I get you? The guy working the register asked as he kept giving me a, oh, that's adorable look. I was pretty basic back then when it came to getting a boba drink. I mostly got things like chocolate milk tea or honey milk tea. That day felt like a honey kind of day. Can I get a honey milk tea, please? He nodded and punched in my order. I looked at her and noticed for her to order as well. I can be classy sometimes. <laughs> I definitely want a milk tea. 
she said, as I saw her squinting up towards the menu. She's like me, I laughed to myself. Blind. <laughs> After a moment of squinting, she decides, I'll take the honey too. We moved back to the table and did the typical catch-up conversations. The, how have you been, and what's your schedule like? I learned the reason she was so enthusiastic during the class we had together was because she was minor in English. Joking man made a gag in motion as I said, oh, that's gross. English was just not my thing, being an engineer and all. But she laughed and said that she enjoyed it because of the fun people who always seemed to pop up in English classes. I mean, she was right. I met her in that class. It felt natural talking to her. It wasn't like the fake pleasantries you had to have when you were talking to family members or something like that. I didn't have to fake a smile and try to politely answer all those questions they asked. Have you gotten taller? Yeah, I got taller. The last time you saw me, I was two. <laughs> or a lot of heavy Filipino accents come out. Do you have a girlfriend yet? No? Why not? You're so foggy. I mean, <laughs> Definitely nothing like that. With her, I can be me. Two milk teas for Brian? I stood up to go get them. And that's where I realized my eyes weren't deceiving me. There was the normal light brownish color of the honey milk tea, but then the other one? The other one was green. As I got to the counter, I asked about it. He gave me a bit of a confused look and told me, this is what you ordered. I asked for confirmation. Can you repeat the order to me? He nodded and told me, one honey milk tea? Wait, 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 wait. One? Why just one honey milk tea? We both ordered them, right? I listened as he repeated the order to me. One honey milk tea and one honeydew milk tea. All right. So why would he think that we ordered a honeydew milk tea? I quickly thought back to our ordering process, and that's when it hit me. Phrasing. The way she ordered. I'll take a honey too. Honey too, honey too. Oh my. I thought I saw something off on the register, but I couldn't have been sure because of how blind it was. If I had just worn my glasses, then this wouldn't have happened. I explained the misunderstanding as he looked at me aghast. I said not to worry about it, as I assumed she would understand the mix-up. I brought the drinks back, and I swear the look on her face was exactly the same one I had as I saw it on the counter. Why is that one green? I explained the misunderstanding as she realized it was a bit of her fault for the honeydew milk tea. I could see the embarrassment on her face. Aww. Just seeing her disheartened like that almost broke my heart. Since I didn't want to wait for them to make a new drink, I'll take the honeydew. She asked me if I was sure. I laughed and nodded as I took my first sip of honeydew. It was interesting. <laughs> Definitely not the same as honey. Kind of like cantaloupe almost, but sweeter. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but it wasn't the worst thing. She watched me, looking for my reaction. I smiled and said, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> she smiled as she began to drink her honey milk tea. It was cute how she was waiting for me to hopefully like the drink before she began drinking hers. <laughs> the rest of the night was really fun. After Boba, we went to Johnny Rockets, which was a 50s-style diner. She laughed as I picked the veggies off of my burger and asked if she could have them. Me not liking them just gave her more to have. Afterwards, a movie. We started out going to see Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> and I was kind of upset about that. I'm not going to lie. Because I had absolutely no interest in that whatsoever. But she wanted to watch it. And it was going well so far, so I reluctantly agreed. After sitting there for about 15 minutes, she leaned over to me and said, I knew this was going to be bad, but it's so much worse than I thought. <laughs> she stood up and had me follow her as we snuck into the show in Spongebob. That was playing one meter of <laughs> Afterwards, we ended up just walking around downtown San Jose. It was definitely a night to remember. Staying up downtown underneath the starry sky, talking about hopes and dreams. All those movie things that I thought were way too cliche to happen in real life. She had talked about her hobbies of origami and the fact that she couldn't bake. And trust me, she could not bake. <laughs> I ended up talking about my insecurities on my major because even at the time, I wasn't sure if that was what I really wanted. Just walking around San Jose talking to her opened my eyes to things that I didn't really think about. Because it wasn't something you do all that often. Every day before then, I used to just go through the motions because it was what I needed to do. I decided to be an engineer before I even knew what it entailed. But now, I was starting to think about things more, and it was thanks to her. She said during those few times, very few times, I participated in our English class, she saw me, and she saw that, she saw that me, she saw that night. A guy earnestly enjoying himself. It's like when you're a kid and you just connect with someone and you think it'll last forever. After that, we hung out pretty much every Friday. Most of the time it was boba. Just like on that day, she got honey and I got honeydew. That's a little inside joke between us. <laughs> Again, it wasn't my favorite, but I enjoyed it all the same. As the semester came to a close, I ended up moving back to San Diego. 
It was a bit harder to keep in touch, but we managed for a bit. Until the day she told me that she was moving to Japan. What? There was no way. It had to have been a joke. I mean, of course it was something I thought could happen, because when I hung out at her place, her parents always talked about wanting to move back to Japan. But I didn't think it would happen then, so soon, or at all. I always joked that I was a bus right away, and if she needed me, I would be on that bus straight up to San Jose. Not quite the same, since the bus route to Japan is a bit wetter and a <laughs> bit more impossible. But, of, of course, I encouraged her. It was what she wanted to do. She talked to me happily about being able to see her fr old friends from childhood and seeing the places she grew up in. And who was I to take that away from her for what seemed like such a selfish and childish, re childish reason of, I want you to stay here. But it was weird. I had always made plans to visit San Jose, and I thought she would be there when I did. But that didn't turn out to be the case. I want to say it's my fault. There's the time difference and all the scheduling issues. I remember at first, I stayed up late into the night so we could talk. But as the next semester started up, it got harder and harder to do that. And eventually, we stopped talking in general. I could have made more of an effort. It really hit me the following spring semester when I was changing my major. After going through my options, I found the most enjoyable thing for me was English. After being 100% on the major switch, the first thing that went through my head was, she's not going to believe this, before I remembered that I hadn't spoken to her in almost a year. Nowadays, the thought barely comes to the front of my mind. It's getting buried behind new memories. I feel bad because she turned into one of those people that I meet, get close to, but then end up not talking to after a while. It's such a sad thing because I'm one of those people for her now as well. But there's times where I do remember. Those times are a sweet little walk down the nostalgic streets of downtown San Jose. They're a movie with a really nice girl. They're a night beneath the starry sky. They're whenever I get a honeydew milk tea, because it isn't my favorite flavor, but it is my favorite memory. <laughs>